สวัสดีค่ะ When we shower, we don't really know how much water we have used, but a smart device can help us, and it is called the water pebble. I talked to its designer, Paul Pristman, about design and sustainability. Paul, before working on the water pebble, have you always been interested in environmental issues? Yeah, I have. I've always been interested in environmental issues. It's um, it's a big responsibility, I think, for for anyone that's working in the design world. I mean, I design products that are made by maybe the many million, so I have to be responsible for that production. And I think it's up to the designer to bring that subject up with the manufacturer or, or with the brand. How did you come up with the water pebble? Well, the water pebble. I was staying in a hotel. And I don't know if you've seen that little sign sometimes, and it says, "Please use water sparingly." Right. And I thought, well, what does that mean? What am I supposed to do? Use less water. Yeah, but how? How do I know if I'm using less water, particularly in the shower? So I came up with this idea called water pebble, mm -hmm. and it's a little device, and you throw it into the shower, mm -hmm. and it tells you how much water is going down the plug hole. Oh. It's quite clever because it actually learns from your shower. So the first time you have a shower, it learns, and then the next time you have a shower, it goes through traffic lights. It goes through green, and then amber, and then red. And when it gets red, you're supposed to finish your shower. But is this plastic? Yes, it's a plastic, it's recycled plastic. Um, so it's waterproof. So you put this. You throw it into the bottom of the shower. Uh huh. And then you just take shower. Take a shower. Normally. And then what it does, it gives you a gentle reminder about how much water you're using when you're in the shower. It will tell you exactly it how much do, water. It could do. But we found in research that we one point we had a, we had a digital readout on this, and it would go from one liter to a hundred liters and a thousand liters. But we found very funnily we found that with the with the the children. They wanted to get to 100, <laughs> so it's completely the opposite. So what we did, we did it as traffic lights. Everybody understands traffic lights, but also, you know, when you're having a shower, is 100 liters good or is it bad? I don't know. So mm. all you need to know is roughly an indication of how long you've been in the shower. And so does it beep? No, no. When it tells you, know, you can you ignore to stop? it if you want. But I've been using one of these for about two years now, and I have it, and it just gives me a reminder how long I've been in the shower. Because some mornings, I think you can have a shower and you don't, you sort of lose track of time. Mm. But I want to know roughly how long I've been in the shower. So that, that's that's what it does. It all does it automatically. So it can report the exact amount of water. It can, but in, in this use. one it doesn't need to because all it's doing is trying to reduce the amount of, of time you spend in the shower, and then it slowly reduces the amount of time every time you have a shower. Oh. So we encourage you to have shorter showers. Is there an ultimate goal in terms of time? No, how it, much um, the time you should spend in the shower? No, because some people are quite good. They maybe have a four-minute shower or five-minute shower. But some people that have ten-minute shower, we want to try and reduce the amount of shower time they have. So this will help. Them. Oh. And what the research has shown that this actually saves about seven liters of water for each shower, just through the reminding people of, of the water. Now, if you multiply that with a family over over a year, it's a lot of water. But it also, it's not just water; it's hot water. So the energy required in heating up that water for a shower. And then getting rid of the water afterwards—it's a, you know, it's a big carbon footprint. So there are lots of reasons for looking after water, and so I think it's going to be a big problem in the world: water shortage. So this can be used in both hot and cold showers. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the it's the water and the energy consumption. And once people understand that this saves them money, you can buy this for a few dollars, and um, within about uh, two months or so, you you get your money back, and you then start saving money. It's that quick. So it saves you money. Can one pebble be shared by many people? Yes, it can do. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. Oh, so one family, maybe just one pebble. Enough. Yeah, that's right. It can be set by the father, so the teenagers don't stay in for for three hours. <laughs> you mean you can set the time? Well, as once well? you once you've put it into the shower, then it will 
then start to behave just as if one person is using it. So, yeah. Since you have been working with this project for yeah. a while, I think, yeah. um, is there any survey saying what's the average time that people take shower? Yeah, I mean, it's recommended at about four and a half minutes. And um, that's a pretty good time. It's a long time. It's, it's a good length of time. I mean, I don't have a problem with, sh with shampoo in my hair, but uh, <laughs> but it, it still shows shows. Uh, it's a good time to have a shower, and uh, that's the recommended amount. Particularly in areas where you know, in Australasia, in Australia, for instance, where water is a big problem, um, they're they're trying to persuade people to have shorter showers to save water. So, so this can help them do this. So this really works in changing really, people's it behavior. Proves, it's proven that it works. Yeah. But I think that's the future of, of sustainable design and, and thinking about the environment, is that the, the way to get people to change their activities is to do it in a nice way. It's not with warnings. It's not with, as soon as you start telling people that it makes your life better, it saves you money, then people, of course, will change their attitude. And I think it's up to the designers to try and help people make that decision. Um, because I think often you think about environmental issues or environmental products and it's, it's not going to be quite as good as one that, that perhaps isn't. But I think through careful design it's possible to make it better and just include that environmental aspect within the product. What's the feedback so far? It's been very good. It's been great. Yeah. It's, um, I mean, all over the world, uh, Australia, America, um, everywhere that, that is, is considering water consumption. And I think as energy, energy fuel price becomes greater, then saving money and saving fuel consumption to heat water up and then dispose of the water afterwards is, is becoming a big issue. Mm -hmm. How is using the water pebble different from, say, set an alarm clock and set less time each time you take showers? It's because this does it all by itself. You don't have to interact with it at all. It switches itself on and it switches itself off. So it, it's, it, you don't need to think about it. It just works. And that, that's where it, it really helps. So once you're done with the shower, you just don't have just to switch it. it off. No, no, just, just leave it. It's just leave it. Leave it. It automatically switches on. When it senses water around it, it switches on. And when it senses the water stopping, it switches off. Hmm. So it's a very clever piece of technology, but although it's, it's, the output is very simple. It's just three lights. But there's a lot of thinking that goes inside this. You see, I think modern products, you don't want things that are overcomplicated. You just want to, something just to give you a reminder. You don't want all the details. You don't want to know how many litres of water is going down the plug hole. You just want to know whether it's right or wrong. And so this does it very Do you simply. use this every day? I do, every day, yeah. It's been around the world a few times with me. Ah. Would it work if, um, like me, if I shampoo my hair, yeah. I'll switch off the yeah. water and then I'll open it again? Yeah, this memorises this. So when you switch it off, it, has, it memorizes where you are, and then it starts again. Oh. It doesn't go back to the beginning. Oh. So it's quite clever in that way, oh, for exactly wow. washing hair. Yeah. What technology do you use in there? Well, it's, it's, um, it's a it's technology that, that was developed for this product. I, 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 I got some electronic engineers to work with me on the project, and um, they developed it, and it's all protected, and, and uh, water pebble. Yeah. Among everything in the bathroom, yeah. how did you come up with the water pebble? It was trying to solve the problem of how we persuade people to use less water. Um, and I, as I say, I think it's, it's to do with trying to help people be good. Because a lot of people are very busy and they haven't got time. So for me, it's fitting in with a busy lifestyle and just helping people do the right thing, but also perhaps not making their life any worse. Um, and I think that's through careful, careful design. Is green design the trend of today's um, design? I think it's, yeah, I, I think green is, is a given. It has to be, it has to do certain aspects. Everything in the world needs to think about the environment. Um, and I think as things are developing, um, it's just becoming part of the project. Uh, you expect it to do it. And that's where the designers are, are having to think about this. Um, you know, when you, of course there is legislation that, with the packaging, with uh, car emissions, these are the, but it's for the designers and engineers to keep on pushing ahead to make these things even greener, and I think that's the goal. Uh, energy consumption obviously is a big issue, um, and as fuel price goes up, it's becoming more of an issue, um, which is a good thing, I think, because it's making us think about the use of energy, uh, and then the pollution. So. It's a good time to be, I mean, there's a lot of talk about green design. 
But I don't think it's, it's going to be like a, a product with a big name on it saying green. It's going to be, of course, this is a good product. Um, and I think you'll see this when you buy a washing machine, for instance, now, or a dishwasher. You know, it's got the, the energy ratings. And, right. You know, it's becoming mainstream. Um, you know, it's not, it's not a sort of a minimal area of product. It's a requirement, and that's a really good thing, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, and when, when that happens, then, of course, everybody's helping, helping the planet. Do you sell the water pebble everywhere in the world? Yes, it does. Yeah, yeah. It's on, it's on waterpebble.com and uh, through retailers uh, around the world. For the water pebble, have you ever met anyone who actually use it and come up to you and talk about it? <laughs> I've had many emails. Yeah. Oh, emails? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Emails. And tweets and uh, blogs and yeah. I mean, the, a lot of people, some people think it's the best product in the world. Uh -huh. you know? And of course, then there's some people that are, have other comments about it. But we try and feed that into the development. Uh, because we're always bringing out new versions. It's always being updated. Uh, things, you know, if you stay still, you can't survive. So you have to keep moving. Mm 